So you want to import your own custom objects and possibly make a chair. Maybe you saw my first two videos, maybe you didn't. We're here now, and we can get it done without an issue. The first thing we're going to have to do is open up a blank project if you haven't. If you have been following around, we're just in our hello world and we just deleted our sample walls. Now I did end up finding where our prefabs are at and we'll be using these a little bit in this video so I might as well go ahead and show you what we'll be using. We are going to pull in our VR chair 3. Make sure there's several of them so make sure you get this one specifically. The VRC chair 3. And this is going to be how we kind of backwards engineer our chair functionality. Now obviously you're probably not going to want to use this model in your world. So that's where the importing a custom chair comes in. And you can repeat this process for any type of object, whether you made it or you're buying it or you find it for free. It's going to pretty much be the same process no matter what we're working with. So I'm not going to tell you where you should get your FBXs is what we're going to be working with today. Uh, I'm going to prepare a couple for us to demo two different things and I need two FBXs for that. So we have our FBXs here. What we want to do is just drag in our FBX and you probably want to make a folder here, but we might do that in a minute. And so the first thing we're going to notice is the scaling will probably be off. And that's essentially because of whatever the author of this model made it in didn't scale it to a one to one for Unity or Unreal. It just left it scaled as however their software did it. So we're going to want to hit the R key to go to scaling and just kind of make that size appropriate. And that's going to totally depend on what model you're working with. And it might be fine as is. Okay, so we have our model in, but we have an issue. It doesn't have any of the textures that we would normally want with it. So what we need to do is actually go back and we need to just drag all of our textures in. You see here we have our different normals and then different albedos. And we want to drag all those just in the same area where we put our chair. And we ha in Unity you have to mark basically the images that are normal maps as a normal map image and it'll automatically notice that we're trying to use it as a normal map, but haven't done that. So we're gonna hit fix now. And when you import this all properly, you can see that it's actually quite high quality and we can reduce the image quality under the actual image and that will make it less resource heavy, but also look worse. So use at your own discretion for VR chat. You wanna make like a private world that's kind of a high download size, but like actually looks really good. Uh, this is how you kind of are going to be doing that. Now for public worlds, I know it's generally super small uh, download size preference. So again, it depends on what you want to do. This is how you do it. And that applies for all of our images. Okay, so the chair here, I said didn't work, and it looks like it works, but here's the issue. The author of this model, what, however it was made, I might be missing something in a material here. I could be missing a setting. Mess, they inverted the plane, so to speak. So it's, you're basically looking through it when you're looking at it, and it's a little weird. And you'll see what a correctly done one looks like in just a second. Also, I want to tell you, if you're holding the right mouse button down and you scroll wheel, that actually affects the speed of your in-game movement. So, like you can see, it's moving really slow here, like really slow, me, and or really fast. That's how you adjust that. Okay, so back to our object. Whoop. Okay, so we don't really need this anymore because it doesn't work properly, and sometimes that's going to happen. 
there are ways to fix it and things like that, but that's advanced stuff and we're not getting there just yet. So we're going to delete this because we're not going to use it. And I'm going to pull in a different one. All right, so now we have a leather armchair with the same problem as last time. We do not have the materials on it. So we're gonna do the exact same thing again. Go to our textures and just pull everything in. And you can see it automatically fixed it for us. And you can really tell the quality, like, the uh, difference it makes when you have normal maps set up it actually looks like there's texture on the object so that's what all the different files do together most of the time in vr chat i see people really don't texture their objects right and materials do work a little differently in here so we will be diving into those at some point in the future all right so now we have whatever object we want and we actually want to make it a chair what do we need to do well, the first thing we need to do is add a box collider. And we do that by just clicking on the object, hitting add component, and typing in what we're looking for. And we want to check the is trigger. Okay, now what else do we need? We need a VRC station. So we're going to add a VRC station. Okay, we have some, we have some options in here. We can um, have it mobile or immobilized, so we're just going to keep it as the default immobilized. We'll get into the other stuff in the future. And we're going to make sure seated is checked and can use station from station is checked. Uh, okay, and now we pretty much need to fill in two things here, which is our enter player location and our exit player location. So how we're going to do that is add a empty object. We are going to position this where we want the player to be sitting. That looks about right. So we're going to go back to our chair and we have our game object. Let's rename this so it doesn't get confusing. We're going to call this uh, My Chair Seat Seated Position. It's kind of long, but better be descriptive and actually know what stuff is when you have thousands of things than not name them and get really confused. Okay. So what we did was we clicked on our chair and we just dragged this my chair seated position to our station enter player location. So kind of makes sense. Now we're going to do going to click on our thing we just created our chair seated position and hit control D to duplicate it. We're going to change the name slightly and say my chair, seated position, exit. Drag it into the exit. Then we're going to move this where we want the player to, whenever they leave the chair, where should the player be? So it kind of like teleports you a little bit. And to prove that, we're going to put it pretty far away. You most likely want it close but just to demonstrate what it does we're going to put it far away okay so we're almost there the final thing we need is an udon behavior so what we're going to do is add an udon behavior and we can do all kinds of really cool stuff with udon behaviors it's kind of like blueprints and unreal kind of um but we, we will get there. So somebody in the comments let me know how you get to this a little easier. But this is another reason we had to pull this out. Is we need this station graph. This will handle the seated functionality for us. It's actually built in. So we just drag that to our program source. Now that will enable some more options. So you have your interaction text here. This is what you want. Uh, the text to appear as so you can change that to sit and then the proximity how close do you need to be for it to appear we're just going to leave it as uh, default 
and you can also change where you want the text to appear by adding another location if you want it to. But this is everything to actually make it work. Uh, but to really see the outcome, let's go ahead and add one more thing. In back in our all prefabs, let's just add a simple prefab mirror. We'll be making custom mirrors at some point. But for now, this default one will serve its purpose. So let's try it out. Alright, so first things, we can see mirrors are panes, which is good information. We have our default uh, test dummy here, which we need to uh, show how to import a custom avatar, so you can use your avatar in your world when you're testing. And as we can see, the text by default is use on the chair, and we changed it to sit. It highlights as it should, uh, as it does not seem to, uh, the collider is a trigger, so it's not blocking you from walking through it, just like theirs. And we can click set. Now our avatar does not have a sitting animation, so he's just kind of standing. But a lot of them, uh, do. And then when we moved off of it, we teleported. So let's just show that one more time. The other way mirror. And that's something else to note, is while panes might be uh, invisible from one side, they do have collision on both sides in Unity. And on Real, they do not. So, if you're coming over from that, that's one major difference. Anyways, setting. And hit W to release. And teleport it. So that's... So all there is to it, that's how you make seats. Yeah, we'll cover more advanced stuff that, like, so like how to make a bed. And a separate video, because I think this is nice enough to be the end of this. I hope you guys enjoyed, hope you are able to follow. I am going to be uploading these to my Patreon, so it'll come with uh, a couple different chairs, and they will be very highly extra. If you need FBXs, like this looks pretty good compared to most stuff I see. So I'm going to add some more stuff, because I think VRChat needs to look better on my Patreon. So if you want to use this stuff, I see a lot of my stuff used in Worlds. So cool. Good. Heck yeah. And I'm not saying I, I modeled this, I'm just saying like uh, some of the stuff I made with blueprints. Anyways, I'm rambling. Thank you all for watching. Hope you learned something. See you in the next video.